This is lesson 37, and we'll be discussing key signatures. Returning to Jay Albrecht's Ready to Read Music, we're on Unit 3, which is our pitch unit, Lesson 6, Key Signatures. Suppose a composer wrote a song and wanted it to sound like this. There are a lot of flats in this song. There's an easier way to write this song. The composer can put all the flats at the beginning of every staff. This way, music readers know to sing or play all the flats which are shown on every staff. So it looks like this. So let's just go through and compare these two examples. So looking at this first example, I want you to notice that we have an E flat. So I'm just going to note that over here. We also have a B flat, so I'm going to note that over here. Our G is just a plain G. We have an A flat. And we have another B flat, so that's redundant. We've already written it. And then we have another E flat, that's also redundant. So we have three flats. We have B flat, E flat, and A flat. And you can see over here where we have the three flats just clustered together at the beginning of the staff that we also have a flat that would be in front of a B. So there's a B flat, here's an E flat, and here's an A flat. And what this means is that every E we see in the piece, we can think of that flat sign as being right in front of it. We can think of every B we see in this piece as having the flat sign directly in front of it. And that carries all the way through the staff. So even this B, we could think of as having a flat in front of it. And this E, we could think of as having a flat in front of it. Oops, and we skipped over. This A would also have a flat in front of it. But instead of cluttering it all up, the composer can just write those three flats that are going to be needed at the beginning of the staff, and then we can know that they apply to all the notes that follow. Here's another example. This one is in the bass clef, and you'll notice that we have just a single F sharp. Instead of putting a sharp in front of every F, the composer has placed one sharp on the fourth line at the beginning of every staff. Sharps or flats at the beginning of a staff are called a key signature. And so every F we would see in this piece, we would know it's really actually an F sharp. This would also be an F sharp. This would be an F sharp. You'll note that the key signature falls just before the time signature, but after the clef. Here are some common key signatures using flat. So you'll notice here we have a B flat. And you'll notice there's a B flat in both clefs because this is a grand staff. So both the treble and the bass clef will be played at the same time. We have a B flat and an E flat. Same with the treble clef, B flat and an E flat. So that would be two flats. And we have a B flat and an E flat and an A flat in both clefs because this is a grand staff. And so the treble clef line and the bass clef line will be played simultaneously. Here are some common key signatures using sharps. So you'll notice we have an F sharp in both the bass and treble clefs. And then we have an F sharp and a C sharp. So this is a key signature that has two sharps. And then we have an F sharp, a C sharp, and a G sharp in both clefs. And this key signature would have three sharps. Musical rule. A key signature will have all flats or all sharps. It will never have both sharps and flats. Musical rule. If an F sharp is in a key signature, then all Fs in the staff will be sharp. The same is true of any other notes for which there is a sharp or flat in the key signature. So looking at some examples, because we have an F sharp and a C 
sharp in our key signature, which note the key signature comes right after the clef. Every F and every C is sharp. So even though this looks like just an F because there's a key signature, it's actually an F sharp. This doesn't have a sharp directly in front of the note, but because of the key signature, this is an F sharp. This would be another F sharp. This would be a C sharp, another C sharp, and another C sharp. Every F and every C is sharp. Let's look at another example. So we are now in the bass clef, and our key signature tells us that every B, every E, and every A on this staff should be flat. So this will be a B flat, another B flat that's lower. We have another B flat. We have an E flat, another E flat, another E flat, another A flat, another A flat. So it doesn't matter which octave they fall in. If you see any B, any E, any A on that staff, it will be flat. Look at the musical examples on the left. These examples have sharps or flats, but no key signature. In the staff on the right, draw the same notes without sharps or flats and add the correct key signatures. Okay, so before we do this, I'm going to share some information with you about the order that sharps are placed in the key signature and the order that flats are placed in the key signatures. The saying to remember the order that I like to use is Father Charles goes down and ends battle. And what this tells us is that our order of sharps is F, C, G, D, A, E, B, meaning if we have a sharp key signature with just one sharp, we can know for sure it's going to be an F sharp. If we see two sharps in the key signature, even at a glance, we can know it's going to be F sharp and C sharp. If we have three sharps, it will always be F, C, and G sharp. You'll never have a key signature with three sharps in it that consists of A, E, and B. It just won't ever happen. So if you have three sharps in a key signature, they'll always be F, C, and G. The only time you'll ever get all the way up to a B sharp in the key signature is when we have a key signature with the max number of sharps, which is seven. Let's return to this example. And I'm just gonna write out that we have a C sharp and we have an F sharp. I have two sharps. We need a sharp key signature with two sharps. So we're going to be using Father Charles or F and C sharp in that order. Our F sharp will be on line five. That's just a theory rule, a notation rule. And that's always where the F sharp in a key signature is notated in the treble clef. And the correct place to write a C sharp in a key signature in the treble clef is right here on space three. So this would be our key signature and would be an easier way of writing the four notes. So now I can just go ahead and write the pitches that I see here. So even though we don't have a sharp sign directly in front of these two pitches, we know that this is still a C sharp and an F sharp. So in our next example, we have flats and we're in the bass clef. So the flats, when they're written in a key signature, also have a specific order. And the reason I love the saying, Father Charles goes down and ends battle as a helpful tool to remember the order of sharps is because it's the same little saying we can use to know the order of flats, which is exactly backwards from sharps. So with flats, the saying goes, battle ends and down goes Charles's father. So it's kind of helpful. Order of sharps is father Charles goes down and ends battle. Order of flats is battle ends and down goes Charles's father. So flat key signatures will always start with a B and their next flat, if they have two flats, will be a B and an E. If it's a three flat signature, it will always have B, E, and A, etc. 
So let's look at our example here. We have a B flat and we have an E flat. And there's a rule about where you could put these flats. You don't need to worry about this because this is really a theory thing. But the convention is that in the base clef, in a key signature, the B flat will go here on line two. And the E flat we're going to use is here on space three. And so our key signature will have a B flat and an E flat. Now I can go ahead and just write my pitches in. And without even putting an extra sharper flat sign in front of them, I know that these are still the same pitches that I have in the example before. So this is still going to be a B flat and this is still going to be an E flat. Draw the key signature with three flats. We've drawn the first flat for you. So remember for a sharp key signature, we would have the order being Father Charles goes down and ends battle. But if we need flats, we're going to reverse that order. Battle ends and down goes Charles's father. So our first flat would be a B. Our second flat will be an E. And our third flat will be an A. And I'll just show you where these flats are placed on a base staff. So we have our B flat already drawn in here. There's our B flat. Now we need an E flat. That'll go on space three. And then our A flat goes down here on space one. Draw the key signature with three sharps. We've drawn the first sharp for you. So now we're back to our order of Father Charles goes down and ends battle. And we need three sharps. So one, two, three. So we need Father Charles goes. We already have our F sharp written on line five, and then we need a C sharp. That'll go on space three, and then we need a G sharp, and the G sharp goes up here in the treble clef, just above the staff. Below are three pairs of key signatures. In each pair, one is drawn correctly, and one is drawn incorrectly. Circle the correct key signature in each pair. So we learned that in a key signature, you can't have both flats and sharps. You always have either flats or sharps. So we can right away say this is incorrect and this one is correct. You also notice we have two flats, battle ends. That's the order. All right, let's look at number two. So we have a base staff again and we have two F sharps. And then here we have an F sharp and a C sharp. We'll never have more than one of the same kind of sharp in a key signature. It just doesn't make any sense. So this is again going to be the correct one. Father Charles. Lastly, we have our treble staff with just a single B flat. And then we have a treble staff with a D flat and a C sharp. Well, nothing about that is right, especially because there's a flat and a sharp in the key signature. So this is definitely our correct one.